What is going on guys? I'm Sword TV Gamer. I noticed you guys like to hang out and chit chat. So we're going to talk a little bit about a lot of things. It's coffee time. Huh? Coffee time. Get your uh, coffee or your monster, your tea or your water, or your breakfast or your lunch or dinner. It's just put me in the background or uh, watch the video we're going to watch today together. As we talk about things in my life and uh, the topic today is basically like what I've been up to, what I've been through without going into extreme detail because it's still uh, still fresh. But I've been wanting to sit down and kind of go over a little bit of insight as well as Melania. Melania. First time I've ever soloed this boss in Elden Ring for people that don't know Melania. As far as I know is probably the hardest boss in Elden Ring. The DLC came out, though, so that might have changed, but I don't know anything. <sighs> so um, before we get started, I just want to say, hey, in the description, I got a friend of mine, uh, two friends of mine, um, Zeke the Geek and Haku the Poet. Um, these people have been friends with me for a very long time, and Zeke the Geek has been uploading gaming videos of Elden Ring, things of that nature, as well as topics of the day, you know, he sits down and just talks to you about certain things. His last video was about purpose. Check that out. He's sitting outside, just chilling. He has some some cool stuff. So if you like hanging out with me, you're going to like hanging out with my uh, other friends. Uh, and same with uh, Haikyuu the Poet. He has a lot of videos up there. Um, he's like me. There's 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 a lot of stuff to watch. Um, I really, really enjoy these people. So I wanted to put them in the description. If you guys want to support them, go ahead. You don't have to, though. Don't click away. I just want to hang out with you today. Um... But I want to support my friends as well. So without further ado, go ahead and uh, sit back, relax, and let's enjoy this uh, this uh, this this moment in my life. It's a huge moment. I've been trying to beat her for about three days, man. Um, there we go. I've been trying to beat her for about three days. It's been really, really difficult. This is the last 30 minutes of my myself attempting to defeat this boss. So, Melania, uh, she has a long blade, as you can see, right? <sighs> now watch what happens when she hits me. I'm, I'm saying this to people that don't know. Look at her health bar. When she hits me anyway, that blade will take the damage that's been done on me and reverse that to heal her. Now in the bottom left corner, you'll see two hammers and then a little flask. That flask is my healing item. I use that to get my health bar back up. My health bar is the red bar on the top left corner. I know I'm explaining things you probably know, but I'm going to show this to like my, my friends and family too. It's really cool. Now you can see she's almost done. But this boss has two phases, meaning you fight her again once you get it all the way down. You have to distance yourself, of course. You have to use a technique called rolling. And that rolling... I'll, I'll, I'm almost done explaining this. Because I, I do want to talk about other stuff. But you got to get the technique down. You got to roll at the right time. Things like that. That green bar, top left corner. That's my stamina. You can see every time I'm holding down the sprint. Or I'm rolling or dodging, whatever. It goes down. If I relax, if I stop running, I can walk. But if I just relax, it'll go back up. That also goes up and down if I use an attack or what I just did, which is the barbaric roar. The barbaric roar essentially increases my damage. 
Now that blue bar in between red and green, that's my FP. Now you use that FP to do the Barbaric Roar. Barbaric Roar has a time limit. I have to use it again. Now I can use a flask that will plenish my magic, my FP, my blue bar. But I only use um, like kind of like a special type of like flask. It's called a physics mix. That essentially will heal me and also give me some FP. But it's not going to fill it up all the way. So this is phase two. Now when she does that, that orange stuff basically will give me Scarlet Rot. Not that important, just know that bar on my character that's red that was building up. You can still see it. It's going down now. It's right there, right above her health bar. If that goes all the way up, I'm in big trouble. Every time she hits me at this point, or anytime she explodes like that, I experience Scarlet Rot. It's a big, big problem. It looks like her clones don't give me Scarlet Rot, but I think her blade will. Scarlet Rot is basically, basically like, uh, I, from what I understand, it's it's like a plant-based uh, infestation on the body, I guess, and she's covered in it. But her name is Melania, and she says every time you start the battle, I skip it. But every time you start the battle, she says. My name is Melania, and I have never known defeat. And she goes into detail a little bit about her backstory and stuff. Um, she fights, from what I understand... I think she lost her brother or something like that. Anyway, she's one of the few people, if not the few people, that did not go completely insane with Scarlet Rot. Anyway, that's a lot of information. Uh, this is New Game Plus 4. So, this is my fourth time going through the game. And essentially, when you do that, when you start the game over and you do it again, things are a lot harder. So, that's basically all you need to know. Uh, for those that know this game, uh, you can see what kind of build I'm doing and stuff like that. And at the end, you'll see like my stats and stuff. I think I'm a... Level 253 or 254. Or maybe 252, I don't know. So anyway. Elden Ring is one of my favorite games of all time, for sure. Like, it's... Last year... I'll get right into it. Last year, I beat the Souls games with my buddy Zero. We played through Elden Ring as well. Off and on. Um, but we went through... Dark Souls 1, 2, 3, Bloodborne, Demon Souls. I don't know if we finished it on my channel, though. Did we? I don't know. I think we did. Yeah. But these games have been an escape for me. They've kept me distracted while I wasn't feeling good. I kind of got sick last year. Um, a lot of things happened. And... I dealt with a lot of anxiety and depression on a profound scale, honestly. And it got to the point where I was having panic attacks all the time. Now I can go into exactly what was going on, but I don't want to. Um, nothing I was doing that was causing it. It wasn't like my fault. All I can say is, um, I was going through a lot of medications and stuff that was supposed to help. It turned out maybe I didn't even, maybe I wasn't even supposed to be taking it. Maybe something went wrong with what they read on my file, what I should take or what I shouldn't take. And instead of things helping me, they were giving me side effects. And I ended up having to go over and over and over new medication, which means I kept going through withdrawals. And, you know, I, I, I just went nuts. 
Um, and it was a very lonely moment in my life. It was one of those, hey, you know, in two weeks I should be feeling better. I just need to get through the the worst of it. And it just kept on going. It started, I would say, back in March of 2023. And I didn't get through it until, I want to say, March of 2024 this year. Um, I can't say the word because I'm on YouTube, but it was the worst depression. So I had those kind of bad thoughts. Not that that's how I do things at all. But I was in that much suffering that it was like a naggy thing in my back of my mind saying that could be a way to, for a lack of a better way of saying it, feel better. But it's never something that I agree with. It was just, to put it simple, my mind saying I uh, I don't feel good. So I, I, I dealt with that a lot. I hung out with my uh, my family for the most part. You know, when you're going through something like that, kind of moving on from that, you need a support group. You need people that are available. And that's hard. A lot of doctor visits, a lot of even hospital visits and uh, testings and neurologi neurologist appointments, MRIs, stuff like that, which I never had an MRI. That was a... Uh, that was terrifying. Um, I was 304 pounds at that time. So when I went in there, I was terrified. I was really squished. Um, the outcome of everything, though, you know, going through everything. Once I started realizing, okay, I need to bunker down. Kind of get off the things that aren't helping. Um, I found something that does help and I started getting better, but I had to overcome that, um, that constant like panic and depression and stuff like that. So I started going on the bicycle. I started doing, uh, pushups every day. I've done pushups since January every day. And I started riding my bicycle in, uh, I think it was in March. I found out I was, uh, because of the medication, it spiked my blood sugar. And I didn't know. So I became pre-diabetic. That was the moment I was like, okay, I'm going to change my lifestyle. So I decided, okay, I'm going to eat healthy. I have to cut, well, I have to reduce my sugar. And I have to stay away from, like, processed uh, stuff, you know, and... I cut out gluten as well. I wanted to get through what I went through without, you know, permanent results or permanent damage. I was pretty close to uh, getting diabetes, but luckily, like, I caught it, right? I was, like, I really want to do blood testing. I want to do it. I want to do it. And I got it. I got the blood testing done, and yeah, so, and then um, from from March until, I guess it was like in the end of May, something like that, I lost 50 pounds, and now I'm almost down 60. There you go, pop. So I, I, I went through all that, uh, hung out with a few friends here and there, uh, got myself busy with other people's stuff, you know, helping people when I can. Um, keep in mind, like when you're helping people, know that they're human and they make mistakes and stuff. The fact that you're helping is what matters. Um, as well as um, a lot of meditation, spiritual things as well. You know, at the time, changing my food and stuff like that, I'll be honest with you, like, I was like, man, I, I can't live the way I want, you know, which was, like, eat whatever I want. Um, I was like, I'm going to miss this food. One of my favorite foods of all time is, like, the uh, pastas, you know, Italian stuff, mac and cheese. 
I was really bummed out, right? But I cared too much about my body and stuff that I was like, I'm gonna just deal with it. Keep in mind, I went through a lot of withdrawal prior, so it's just like, it's just another detox kind of thing. I felt pretty anxious just stopping pretty much, like, the sugar was still there, but it was like what was required in the food. So we're talking, I didn't go above maybe 10, 15 milligrams of sugar for three months. That's all I really had to do, and I had to work out. I spent a lot of time with the steam room, sauna, and stuff like that. So, I mean, that's that's what I learned was basically, you know, um, over time is that, you know, actually this new lifestyle that you're, you feel like you're forced to do, is actually really pleasant. I prefer it. I feel so much better. I have more clear, I have a more clear mind when my anxiety isn't going haywire. Less brain fog, things like that. I, I feel good. You know, I post pictures on Facebook, you know, where my friends can see my family. And they're impressed with my weight loss. I actually posted that maybe a week ago. And then so, like, a good, a good friend of mine, she also lost 50 pounds around the same time. And it was really cool that she posted that. To have support from people is hard, but if you can get it, it, it does reinforce positivity in your life so that's why a support group is really important now with this boss it kind of reminds me of the push-ups and the bicycling and making changes and stuff like that it's 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 not about being a millennium necessarily i mean that is like the the outcome you want but Millennia and everything I went through, they're very similar in a sense where it's a learning experience, trial and error. I I couldn't read this boss's moves, man. I, I literally, I couldn't. Like, three, three days ago, I, I couldn't read it. I couldn't dodge these moves. I couldn't do any of it. It was, it was just too much. So increments, little bits, little tiny information that you require and then adjustments with that information to really get it down. Like that's, that's what life is about, man. You know, just learning and feeling good about yourself once you get through it. Can I do this boss every single time now when I attempt it? No, I think I tried. I'm not even kidding. <sighs> And this is a consequence of always doing this game co-op. Um, it, it's a it's a different experience learning how to do this on your own, and it feels so good, right? So, you know, wh whatever I was gonna say, basically, like sometimes we. I mean, anyway, moving on is the fact that, like in life, sometimes we. We should go after those things for ourselves where we do have to do it solo just to show us <laughs> show us that we can. You know, the big thing that kept me doing this, the, the, the reason why wasn't just for bragging rights and stuff like that, though. Hi, YouTube. Hi, friends on YouTube, right? Um... It's because I've felt so sick lately, so miserable, so uh, foggy in the mind and stuff like that. And this is essentially one of the hardest bosses in gaming in general. I wanted to know if I can do it. Because you feel so bad and you're held back with those yucky feelings. You want to like... You want to you want to know that you can still do the things you want to do. So that's why I kept going, you know, 10 hours a day. I, I spent I I think I spent about 23 hours. And keep in mind though, I I did go and explore, help other players as well for a while, level up. I went to uh if you want a good leveling leveling area, 
in Elden Ring, go to Mog's Palace, which is actually you have to kill Mog to uh, to access the DLC, I think. So anyway, like literally go to the first um, resting spot in Mog Palace. And there's a bunch of frog people of all things, and you just kill them over and over again. In two minutes, you should get around 40,000 40, runes. Bottom right corner there, that's my rune count. I don't have any right now. But you use runes to level up and buy stuff. If you die, you lose them. But you can go and get them if you don't die on your way to go get them. If you do die on your way to get the runes... Bottom right corner, let's say that said 200,000, and I died on my way to get those again, I lose them forever. Welcome to Eldering. Let me know, like, if you're drinking coffee or whatever, how you like your coffee or your tea or your drink or what you ate, or if you just chilled. But I hope you guys are doing good. You know, I want you to keep in mind that not everybody has an easy life, even though it may seem like that. We all got stuff going on. Don't be discouraged when things are really difficult. And uh, you can always leave a comment. I usually respond if you're behaving. <laughs> so... And, Thank you guys for all the support lately, too, with the Silent Hill 2 remake talk, and I'm proud of you guys. I understand that people are really worried about Silent Hill 2. They don't like certain things, and they're voicing that. Look, we're voicing positivity. They're voicing their feelings. It may be negative, but, you know, they're trying to reinforce what really matters to them. So a lot of people are speaking. I remember, even if it's different from ours, it's okay don't let it change your opinion if you feel a certain way. Of course, you can look at it and have a new perspective. And maybe then you do feel different. Maybe you know something you didn't know before they said what they said. And that's all okay. But I do, I do see uh, with any kind of video, any kind of controversial thing, there's like helpful stuff that people are saying things that maybe people need to get off their chest but then there's literally just uh you know attacking attacking and i'm proud of everybody that when they browse youtube or social media in general i'm proud of everybody that chooses to just voice how they feel without uh attacking sometimes you have to be hard on people but is that attacking or defending you know <sighs> so that Scarlet Rod almost, almost hit. You know, honestly, I don't know. I have it in the back here, too. I don't know which, which fight is the final one. Sure, it's not this one, I think. Death? No. You know what's funny? It's like, I don't exactly remember how it went down. <laughs> you know? <laughs> something about me is that like when um when I do something over and over and over and over and over, even if it's just a, a song that I really like that I have on loop, it will play in my head when I go to bed. For a little bit. I can I can usually push it out, but you best believe she was telling me she's never known defeat over and over again in my mind that she is Melania, Blade of Mechala. And just the sounds of me taking damage. <laughs> we were playing in my head, dude. <laughs> it was it was one one experience I will never forget doing this. Am I gonna do it again? I don't know. It was rough. I think this might be it, guys. So what I learned from watching Asmongold was um, this. Well, I didn't do a good job. I learned a lot of like in phase two, distance yourself a little bit. 
he had a halberder of some sort, I think. Sorry if I, I'm saying the wrong... But anyway, thanks to Asmongold, I was able to beat this. Along with a few other YouTube video channels. A few... I think this might be it, guys. This might be it. Well, if it is, thank you for watching. Thanks for hanging out. I really appreciate it. I'm going to keep drinking my coffee. Come on, Sword TV Gamer, you got it. I really felt like I couldn't do it. I, I was very, very sick, by the way. My brain wasn't working. I was very dizzy. I was confused and stuff like that. Because I'm not over uh, a withdrawal. Plus, I've been pushing myself so hard lately. So, like, I really wasn't feeling good. My thumb wasn't pressing the button at the right time. And, and keep in mind, I'm not, I'm not an Elden Ring uh, best of the best, right? Here we go. Boom. Boom. Look at that! And then I start doing this. That scream is for all the all the players that die fighting her. I did it for you guys, not just for me. You got a strength build and stuff like that. Hopefully you don't have to go as crazy as I had to, but um, I really like this outfit and these weapons. I really wanted to just go bonkers. So there you go. This was hands down. See, now I have runes on the bottom right corner. This was hands down the hardest thing I've ever done in a gaming uh, scene here, like in any game ever. I still got to sit down and play Sekiro. This is my character without. <laughs> you might want to take off the chest piece too, dude. Show off those muscles and wounds probably. And I just wanted to sit here and just look at the area and gather the the... I didn't scream, I didn't go, yeah, I did it. Um, when I beat her, all I did was go, that's it. But I didn't feel like it was it, but it was. Three days, off and on. Shaking and tired and all that. And I did it. I did it. Look how beautiful this area is, dude, and the sound effects. This game, and all the Souls games, the point of what I was saying in the beginning, they have helped me a lot. There's a lot of video essays, lectures, and stuff about these games that have helped people realize that you can work with yourself and believe in yourself, have faith in yourself. Uh, these games taught people that and they apply it in real life. Mine was, it was a distraction. And I kept playing these games. And then I started to work at myself. And then over time, I learned uh, discipline with the push-ups every day. I'm up to 40 a day. And then bicycling, losing weight, eating healthy, and telling myself no with foods, you know. And then I came back to this game and I was like, it's time to see if I can really do it, even though I feel like crap. Uh, embrace the suck, as David Goggins says. There you go. So thank you for sitting down and relaxing, get your mind off some stuff and listen to me and... As you can see, when you beat this boss, she'll, once you rest, you come back and it's like a, a shell of the scarlet rot that consumed her. I guess Melania, with the themes that she has to deal with, she never knew, never known defeat. 
And you as a player, I would imagine, never known giving up. Truly. Very interesting battle. These are my uh, stats and stuff like that. I'll go ahead and um, put this up here. As you can see, I mean, that's my stuff. <sighs> I had to grab a USB and put it in my uh, PS5. And I play the PS4 version, so it's 1080p, 60 frames per second. But, um,. Hopefully in doing so and, and literally grabbing the file, putting it on my computer and doing it like this, it won't be as pi pixelated as just uploading it from my uh, PlayStation 5. Unfortunately, like I, I don't have a gaming capturing device yet. So when I do like commentary that's live with games on my consoles and stuff, you know, on the PS5, for example, uh, it's going to be a little pixelated. I have to... I could possibly... Actually, I could possibly... No, I could possibly now... I can just transfer it onto my... Onto my computer and then upload that... On YouTube. So it would be less pixelated. Because it still ca uh, captures the uh, audio. Might need to get Adobe or whatever. But that's it. Uh, one thing about this armor is it has like high pose, poise, high poise, which kind of makes it harder for, uh, enemies to, uh, and players because you fight other players in this game too, harder for them to kind of stagger me and make me and like lose my balance. <sighs> so, yeah. I think that's it, guys. So, you guys take care. I'll see you on the next uh, next video. I appreciate you guys. See you.